Uh, William Patterson, a leader of the U.S. Civil Rights Congress, submitted a petition titled We Charge Genocide to the UNGA in December 1951. It documents hundreds of killings and other abuses targeting black Americans from 1945 to 1951, arguing that the crimes committed by the U.S. government against black Americans constitute crimes of genocide as defined in the UN a Convention for Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide. It concludes that proof of black genocide is everywhere in American life and calls on the UN to demand that the U.S. take steps to stop genocide. Any comment? I noted relevant reports. This retrospect on the dust laid in history more than 70 years ago once again exposed the open wound of racial discrimination in the U.S. The petition records that more than 10,000 black people had been lynched or killed, often for something as small as failure to say sir to white people. Many more, it adds, suffered from serious bodily and mental harm from beatings, assaults, and the terror caused by the constant threat of such attacks. Regrettably, however, the problem of racism laid bare in the document remains unsolved today and has even worsened. We cannot help but ask, nearly 250 years after the U.S. was founded and almost 160 years after the Emancipation Proclamation was issued, has Uncle Tom finally got a cabin of his own? Has Django been unchained? Has the dream of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. come true? And why is it that people like George Floyd still cannot breathe? I want to point out that throughout history, the U.S. committed systemic violation of Native Americans' human rights in every aspect, through slaughter, expulsion, and cultural assimilation. This is more than enough to constitute de facto genocide. The U.S. government is capable for this. In 1814, then U.S. President James Madison issued a decree rewarding $100 for the scalp of every Indian man above the age of 12 and, at the same time, $50 for that of every Indian woman or child. There are also sayings and quotes that Indian skin makes good boots. The U.S. must pursue the Indians to extermination. An Indian should be executed every 10 minutes. The only good Indians are dead Indians. These words I just quoted and unthinkable racist remarks were actually uttered by then U.S. presidents. Even today, the evil of genocide still runs in the blood of the U.S. The U.S. should grit its teeth to remove this poisonous tumor afflicting every sinew of its society and put an end to the two-century-long chapter of Indian genocide and racial discrimination once and for all.